It is that time once more. I'm assembling the sensible people of the world to find out who has been stupid this week. And of course, as you well know, there are plenty of contenders, all the way from COP26 in Glasgow, all the way down to the shores of Dover, all the way across to America, and everywhere else in the known universe, because it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for Plank of the Week. And joining me today, we have a newbie. For the first time ever, uh, we have Jason Reed from Young Voices join us. Jason, welcome to Plank of the Week. Thank you for coming in for Thank the first time well. ever. Uh, and I don't want to describe her as a veteran, obviously, because it is November. But um, Dawn Neeson, the woman who's been on Plank of the Week more than anybody <laughs> else in the history of Plank of the Week, welcome back. Thank you, bro. I'm glad you didn't describe me as an oldie. Jason, tell us uh, who you want to first nominate for Plank of the Week. Well, I thought I'd start with a really strong one. I'm going with the French. The French. OK, win. The French. Fine, yeah, we go. like that. Very good. <laughs> what have fine. they done now? The entire nation of France. Yeah, this is about the, the migrants crossing the Channel. Yes. Uh, and the record that was broken in the last few days for over a thousand boats mm. crossing the Channel in one day. Uh, the French had a load of excuses about why this was. One of them was that it was a bank holiday. Oh, yeah. So there weren't as many people working. They, they have a lot of those in France, don't they? Wine. They do, don't they? More yeah. than we and do. they might have been on strike as well at the same time. They could have been. A lot of that. Yeah. Possibly. Mm. Yeah, and also apparently Kamala Harris was in town and she's much more important than, you well, know... Well, she was in Calais. <laughs> Presumably. What's she doing in Calais? Yeah, the What's she here? doing there? No. Blimey. Well, the great thing about the French, right, as well, is that as somebody pointed out a little while ago, they seem, somehow managed to, uh, to entrap and hold hostage one British fishing boat, mm. but they can't stop a single dinghy that leaves their shores uh, almost on a daily I, basis. Well, that's and, why it's the entire French Navy is guarding that one fishing yeah. boat. They and supposedly today, by the way, Priti Patel had uh, talks with mm. her counterpart in France, whose name I can't even remember and I'm not going to mention. I don't know what the point of that is. Well, I mean, Do you? Well, I mean, Priti has been talking a good talk, to be mm. fair, she does about talk cracking talk. down, stopping the migrants, yeah. but nothing happens. No. I mean, absolutely nothing happened. No, and nothing I mean, will happen. It's like, how many were there? It's like um, 23,500 mm. this year alone. Yes. Compared to 800 But those last are the year. ones we know about because they're yeah. also, I mean, I have people down in, in that part of the world who tell me that there's an awful lot of boats that arrive we don't even know about because they're not brought yeah. in by border force. They're just literally, you know, the dinghies that come up and land on the beach. They get off, they walk into the town. Happens in places like Dungeness, happens in places like Bexhill, and nobody knows nobody where they knows. go. So, I mean, you know, like, it's 23,500 this year and mm. 8,000 last year. So that's quite an increase. Yeah. That's pretty, it's clamping down. Yes. It might not be her fault. It might be the civil servants who are fried their own shadow well, behind us. That was the other big story this week, wasn't it? The border force guys, apparently, the union, have said that they would like to launch some kind of judicial review about the instructions they're given, which are that they should return some of the boats as quickly as they possibly can to France with the people on them. And they're saying they don't want to do that. They can't, no. They, they don't, don't want, want to do to, it. No. Because Why do they want to do it? They don't want to do it because apparently it might be unfair. Let's get you going, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> unfair to who? They're to the, the border French? force. I mean, I can understand yeah. if it was Amnesty International going, we think this is unfair, mm. we should really be very kind to these people. But they're the people that are supposed to be patrolling the bloody border, and we for have, heaven's sake. Exactly, and we have actually paid the French £54 million pounds oh, yeah. to do the job of yes. patrolling their Did border. Did we actually give them the money, though? Yeah, we have given them have the we? money now. Yeah, we gave them the money What have they done week. with that? Um, obviously, um, I, I had a bank change holiday. Change the colour on their flag. Oh, change the colour yeah. on the flag. It was that. the wrong colour blue. Is it white yeah. now mm. altogether? No, no, just white. No. Well, well, Macron, who, who confesses <laughs> to really... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm cheese eating surrender monkeys. That you is, um, you, you, can't, you can't get away from that. It's, no, just, it's true, that, isn't it? Bother. But I mean, it was the wrong colour blue, wasn't it? Because Macron, who has an election to win next year, That's I wonder funny why that, he's behaving yeah. like he is. In uh, any case, he wanted to uh, um, get away from the EU colour blue. Oh, yeah. So he's now gone for the mate of the more French, the original blue. See, I don't think he should be allowed to do blue. that as a leader because he's, only, he's like a football manager, he's a caretaker of the country. He shouldn't be allowed to change the colour of the flag. That's the problem when you don't have a monarch, isn't it? Yeah. He goes to a palace and he thinks he rules everything. Well, yeah. they didn't work out too well last time they had a monarch, so it's well, probably yeah, just no, as well they haven't good. got Actually, one. Actually, maybe they should just bring the guillotine back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would stop the migrants, I suppose, but that might be considered <gasps> to be too rough can't say that. and ready. But the thing is, right, in the week we've had a terror attack, OK, mm. and I'm not saying that everyone coming over is a terrorist, and I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have homegrown terrorists. There's we no do. question that but some of them are. Well, there are an awful lot of, and we have to be honest here, they're not all women and children, are they? Strapping young men. Hardly any of them are women and children. Who destroy all their paperwork. And we, we, so we don't know who they are. Well, they're we all coming from five countries, apparently, as well. We, yeah, uh, best, yeah. Best, best we can uh, yes, figure yeah. out. Yeah, and we, we don't know who they are. We don't know why they're here. And, you know, and in, in the week that we've had a terror attack in Liverpool, 
it's just, it doesn't mean you're racist, Islamophobic or uncaring to be concerned about the amount of people, young men coming over Listen, here. I'm, I, I don't uh, hold back on this. It's not about being nice to people, being kind to people. I mean, lots of people, I said this today, you know, just because I want to go and live in Bishop's Avenue doesn't mean I can walk in, knock on the door and go, hello, mate, can I mind if I come live in your house? I should got a mate that lives there. He probably would let you. I know exactly yeah, who that yeah, is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know Bishop's Avenue. I used to cycle down there all the time when I was mm. a kid. And, you know, it's massive, huge houses, you know, but you can't just say, I'd like a better life, so can I come and live here? Well, it's like, it's like saying, you? You, it's like any of us going to America, isn't it? It's like, you know, well, I just want to come and live in America. Yeah. It's a really nice place. If it's like, no, not happening. Yeah. You can be the well, most pro well, To be fair, there are a lot of Mexicans doing that. Yeah, that's true. You know, Maybe we should just wait. You, I mean, we if you think this we... is a migrant crisis, wait till you see what's going on on the Mexican border. Well, and then, and then obviously that gets us started on what's happening on uh, Polish and Belarusian. Border. Well, indeed. Well, isn't it funny that the EU says that the Belarusian uh, yes. migrants are not real migrants? No. Apparently. And the, the, How do they the, work that out? Then? And the hmm. poles are perfectly okay to build a fence and send the, the armed forces down yeah, yeah. to stop them crossing. That's fine. Whereas we're being we selfish can't do that. Yeah. because we're not homing everybody right. in, in the entire world that wants to come Why aren't all these human rights lawyers going over to Poland to go and work on behalf of the migrants who want to come over the fence? Why are they not doing that? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Strange, I mean, they're a little bit busy over here, aren't they? I suppose they are. And, well, and, and the, 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 so is he the, picking up the legal aid? Uh, Luca? Well, why? And and the bloke in Liverpool, this piece of scum in Liverpool that blew himself up. Yeah. Thank the why. Um, he he are, um, has been here since two thousand and fourteen. Yeah, when he was refused his, asylum. He was refused asylum seven years ago. Mm. And I think he was so, refused asylum a few more times. Yeah. Because here's an interesting story that I discovered mm. because somebody sent it to me today. Back in 2016, uh, the piece appeared in the Sunday Times because this guy did it about how many um, asylum seekers were going the route of conversion to Christianity oh. because apparently yeah. it helps them get asylum. Yeah, of course it does. Because you can't be sent I mean, back. there are so many, so many things wrong with the system. I don't know where yeah. to begin, with. You really. could be the most pro or the most anti-immigration person yeah. in the world, yeah. but the system is just riddled with incompetence. Yes. It's ridiculous. Yes. To the point that the best idea they could come up with was a wave machine to try and send the boat <laughs> yeah. back onto the French shore. Well, so it'd be a bit like sensor parks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, oh, this is good. Well, the, the whole you know, thing, let's They set the alarm off before the waves start. <laughs> and then, can you have a flume as well? I mean, why don't you just enjoy it? Let's face it, Mike, we are the centre parks of migrants. We are. Come here, have a good time. Yeah, it's actually more fun at centre parks yeah, uh, than it is crossing the channel, but only just. <laughs> just. But if you convert to Christianity or you, you suddenly discover that you're gay, yeah. you, you won't get sent back to the country that you've destroyed your paperwork, so we don't even know what country that yeah. is, because you will get prosecuted and persecuted. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I don't it? know how we've got to this system. point. Yeah. There's, there's no I don't people... really blame the French, actually, because if you were the French, you'd be doing the same thing. You'd be going, well, we don't want them in Calais, so, you know, you guys carry on. There's a few more dinghies. Well, there's <laughs> well, another 54 they're million. They're there with their pumps pumping them up, in. aren't they? Yeah. Zut alors. There's no people trafficking lobby, right, that goes to governments and says these are the benefits of right. dinghies crossing the channel. So it's just incompetent. It's, yeah. Nobody supports what's no. happening now. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, on a serious note, and I can be serious, evidently, um, there are genuine migrants that we do well, need of course to there are. offer. Yeah. But the people who are trying to come here legally are being completely um, stuffed so this by the these illegal yeah. ones. And, and it is funny, I mean, I'm part of the mainstream media, but it's whenever, it's <laughs> nearly, very nearly, but whenever they have a picture of a, a, a migrant on page one of the, the, the serious newspapers, mm. not mine, obviously, um, it's always a pretty little girl. Mm. And it's like, there have probably been about three pretty little girls have come over here yeah. out of the <laughs> several thousand strapping young men. I know, it's not men. good. It's not good. Right, mm. anyway, time for your first nominee. Should we get festive? Go on. Yay! Because it's nearly Christmas. Is it? Evidently. You know what I've seen lately? A lot of Christmas trees out. It seems to be earlier than ever. I've never seen them this early in November. It's sacrilege. It's unbelievable. No, who would do that? I've got a winter tree. It's not a Christmas tree, a you don't tree. mind, young man. Winter Wait, tree? Winter tree. I have mean? a Christmas tree that's up all year round. I only put the lights on it, though. In, oh, well, when, see, there you go. In, in see, mine's the got festive what, period. Oh, it's like, what, is, your, what, is yours got pre-lit lights and yeah. stuff on it? Oh, yeah. that's nice. It's just a little tiny, you know, that sort of size. Oh, you've only got a little one? Yeah, it's only because I've don't. i got a big one elsewhere. That's about 12 inches, so, Mike. It's quite impressive. Is that what you think 12 inches is? <laughs> anyway, oh, man, what that's you enough know? of that sort of talk. Any case, I'm going to talk about Tesco. Family Tesco's. show this. Go on, Tesco's. <laughs> yes, every little helps, Oh, no, this is a family show, what the Adams family. <laughs> every little helps. <laughs> Right, this is their new Christmas advert, right? Okay. Um, and it's it's fairly down. And we've had some really rank Christmas adverts this yeah. year already. There's a lot it's of usually John Lewis that gets it, isn't it? There's a lot of competition out there, isn't there? But this one I, I found particularly um, plankish because it features Santa needing a vaccine passport to get into the oh. country. 
migrate. He should have just got on a bloody dinghy. It'd have been, well, it would have been no easier. problem whatsoever. Yeah. However, yeah, but then he wouldn't get to go anywhere else. He'd just be stuck here <laughs> in a council house. It'd be, oh, it'd be in a five star <laughs> hotel somewhere, wouldn't it? Anyway, so they had. Free dollar kebabs. <laughs> that was the other thing, wasn't it? So they have Santa needing a vaccine passport. Now, right, OK. This might be tongue in cheek by Tesco, yeah. who are going, you know. I think they're take, going. Oh, that was a bit, I think bit it was a bit, a bit of a wrong thing yeah. to do because it's not that I have a problem with the, um, with the whole vaccination issue. But what I do want at Christmas is I want escapism, I want fun, I want fairy lights, I want to forget he about... He comes to the right place. The pan... What? Fairies? No, here. Oh, this building. Full of, it's full of <laughs> full dreams, of hopes, fairy lights. wishes, fairy lights. <laughs> I'm stopping like. there. Yeah. Um, but any case, I, I want to escape from the pandemic this Christmas. Last Christmas, little co- little kids were told that if they hugged anyone Santa's age, thousands of grannies would die. Yeah, and Santa might even die. And Santa might even die. I didn't realise until Laura Dosworth told me today that there was an advert, I didn't see it, where they were wheeling Santa into an NHS COVID yeah, ward. Yeah, oh, God. Did yeah, you not, see yeah, that? Yeah, have you not seen that? No. Yeah. It was, oh, did I you was, see that, Jason? No, I didn't. What product was that trying to advertise? The, the NHS. NHS. <laughs> you know. And of course, at the Which end, is in they saved him. Is, every, um, yeah. And everybody you know, was clapping, and he, got, he came out and he was healthy and he could deliver all the presents. And of course, everybody was clapping for them then, and now we're sacking them because they don't want to take a vaccine. Well, quite. That's not very I mean, festive, that's, is it? Uh, that's, uh, yeah. and, uh, Unbelievable. Uh, it is. And the NHS is obviously in crisis again uh, yeah. every year for the yeah, last God knows how many is. decades. But yeah. th- that's my problem with this advert. It features. Santa, who is definitely real, by the way, getting into the country using a vaccine passport. He doesn't need to go don't... through security or, indeed, passport control, does Well, it? it's Rudolph in quarantine. Well... I mean, as Rudolph had his rabies jabs. He might have He might have been quarantined in France on the grounds that they wanted to eat him. Well, yeah, they do, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. They, they, what? they eat reindeer, reindeer, do they? Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, they eat anything. Yeah. Anything that moves. Mm. Particularly if he's got probably why the migrants would gather there. That's probably why they're running, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. I'm, I'm nominating Tesco. I mean, you know, I prefer Aldi's Talking Banana. The Talking Banana is quite cute, at least. Talking Banana? Yeah, have you not seen the Aldi no, one? No, I like... obviously miss most of these ads. I don't watch them on television. Been? Have you seen the Talking no, Banana? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> not for the first time, men don't know what I'm talking about. But this is Aldi's advert, which features a Talking Banana. OK. And What's that going to do with Christmas? It's, it's a Scrooge story. Scrooge didn't have a banana. Scrooge is the banana. Scrooge is played by the banana. Right. What's the the point of that? Do people make money? Because they sell bananas. They don't sell Scrooges. Do people make money out of making these adverts? There must. There was a time when they used to have advertising agencies, right, who had people called creatives who came up with really good ideas. Mm. It sounds like they don't do that anymore, do they? They obviously don't employ them. I mean, what meeting do you sit in where the guy goes, "I've got a good idea. Why don't we get talking bananas to play Scrooge?" (laughs) Doesn't sound like a winner to me. A banana Scrooge. Oh, dear, dear me. That's mm. awful. That's I didn't, I'm not making this up, honestly. No, I'm sure you're not. In any case, I like the idea of Anyway, banana. I think Tesco dropped a major clang yeah, here. Yeah, no, I do. Because um, I think the, the reaction to it has been yeah. overwhelmingly yeah, there, there negative. Hashtag ban. Because people don't like you messing Tesco about with Santa. You know, Santa no. is Santa. Leave Santa alone. Are you honestly wanting children to watch that? who think no. that Santa now might not come because he hasn't got a vaccine this passport. Is the, this is the message behind it, isn't it? And it is a bit... I mean, the whole the, the whole advert is very pandemic linked because the lights keep going out as well. And it's like, what, why is that? So you've got a little kid sitting there and suddenly the lights go out. And it's like, not quite... And the little kid looks scared yeah. as well because well, they're surprised. concerned that Santa can't get here. Yeah. Well, if they haven't been scared by the COVID story, they'll be scared by the COP26 yeah. story of how ah. the world's going to end in 10 years, you know, because we're Well, then ruining we'll have another the Christmas advert with some turtles choking on plastic straws. <laughs> like just about that. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Now, I'm going to go with something slightly with banana, more localised, right? I'm going with East Yorkshire buses for my first nomination. Hey, now, sexy. now, this is a very Christmassy type story because apparently they've got a rule with East Yorkshire buses that if your bus has shut the door because like all buses, their doors are automatic, right? If the door has been closed and the driver has been deemed to be leaving the bus stop, then he doesn't have to let anybody else on. Now, you can understand why they have this, because, health you know... Health and safety. Health and safety, first yeah. of all, obviously, which is our watchword for everything here at uh, Talk uh, Radio TV. And, of course, at the end of the day, you don't want people trying to clamber onto a bus because um, it might be dangerous. However... True. The case that we're about to talk about involves a young teenage girl, 16 years of age, uh, who was out with her friends and tried to take the last bus home from a place called Dunswell. I'm not quite sure exactly where that is. Um, but basically, she was refused permission to get on the bus, even though it was the last bus home. She burst into tears. She was pleading with the driver. Um, and he basically kept trying to drive off while she was standing there. So she quite 
naturally sort of went to the front of the bus and said, no, I need you, this is the only way I can it's get home. It's the last bus home. It's the last bus home, literally. So you know, leave her there in the dark. I've got no other way of getting home if you leave me here. Then a police officer turns up. Police officer, a woman police officer, luckily, said, come on, open the doors, let her on the bus. It's the last, he still wouldn't do it. Joking. This guy literally said that if he opened the doors, he would be fined by the bus company and he couldn't possibly do it. And he said, in any event, as you can see, I've driven away from the the bus stand, which he hadn't. He'd li literally not even moved. He'd shut the door. That That's was it. outrageous. How long was he waiting there talking to the policewoman, talking to everyone? Well, it must have taken some time. I mean, he could have easily yeah. opened the door. But this is the kind of jobs worth that we have so now in this country. was he shouting at them through the door? Yeah, he didn't open the, the door. No, because if you don't open the door, obviously... You know, the girl could have sign language, you know, oh. But this is the problem with what some parts of Britain have now become, where people just follow the rules and the regulations, and you can't possibly, you know, for any stretch of the imagination, help somebody out. So guess what happens? So the police officer gives the girl a lift home, so she, even the police officer can't influence this guy. Has to give the girl a lift home. The father is absolutely incandescent uh, with rage. Gary Hockney says his daughter was in tears. She now doesn't want to go out anymore, you know, because she's worried that she'll never be able to get on the bus again. I That's mean, it's just horrendous, outrageous. right? Isn't the it? bus company have since said that they're sorry um, and that uh, they regret the incident. But they've obviously given all of their drivers that this is, instruction. That is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, especially at the moment when you've got heightened awareness about women's safety. Well, this is it. After Sarah I mean, Emerald. imagine if that was a male a, a police officer, for example, and the male police officer had said, don't worry, sweetie, I'll give you a lift home. What's she supposed to do then? Well, quite. He's on his yeah. own. Well, Sarah Everard, yeah. Do so, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he's on his own. Yeah. He has to give a young 16-year-old girl a lift home. That's just not right. And, and, and the irony of during the whole Sarah, the aftermath of the Sarah Everard case was the Metropolitan Police, I know it's a different police force you're talking about there, but the Metropolitan Police yeah. actually advised people, if you were a bit dubious about the, the, the copper arresting you, to wave down a bus, to flag down a bus. Who's not going to stop if you're at a bus stop by the right. sounds of it? I so know. They're not yeah. going to stop if Well, here's what happened, in. right? There's video footage which she films, right? Shows her standing in front of the East Yorkshire bus at one point. The girl says, can you please let me on the bus? He's just sitting there beeping his horn to tell to, to, to get out of the way. She says, I need to get home. Can you please just open the door? Beep, beep, I... beep, beep. I mean, what a complete plonker this guy is. It's all very well regressing the incident, but if they're not going to change their policy, that's just going to happen again, isn't it? It's well, exactly the same it as the Sarah Everard case. Yeah. They all said to the Metropolitan Police, oh, we're very sorry, yeah. we really have sympathy yeah. and everything, but if you don't change anything, no. nothing's going to change, and is it? The police, is, it? the police officer walks around to the side window to question the bus driver who says... I'm not allowed to open the doors. <laughs> the thing is... I mean, I what mean, a plonker. <laughs> planker. What a planker. What a planker. 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 But, I yeah. mean, there are... Rules is rules, OK, we all understand that. But surely... Yeah, but it's one thing to be... Common to, sense. Yeah, but you stop somebody from jumping onto a moving train. Yeah. I get that. I was once actually stopped from getting on a train that wasn't moving by a guy who said that it was going to move soon. And I said, that's fine. It's literally there. I'll just get on it. Well, the doors are still open. He went, no, no, no. The rule is that, you know, two minutes before it leaves, you can't go on the platform. Two minutes is a long time. How long does he think it takes you to get up the I stairs? I was literally, the, I wasn't even going up the stairs. It, the the train was literally, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could take a while, depending on where I've been before. Um, but no, the, the train was literally over there where you are, and I was at the barrier here, and he wouldn't, he put his hand out to stop me going. That's mad. And I missed my connection. Funnily enough, I was going to Centre Parks. Wish I, I wish I hadn't uh, found another train. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. Anyway, so uh, East Yorkshire bus is absolutely disgraceful um, plank of the week for me. Jason, your next one. Uh, my next one is our wonderful leader, Boris Johnson. Oh, yes. For, He's been uh, in it a lot lately. He has. I'm not surprised, so. to be honest with you. Exactly, yeah. Admit. Well, at the, uh, the COVID press conference, he was asked to rule out another Christmas lockdown. Yes. And he said no, which is uh, just continuing on the happy festive theme yes. from before. I mean, some people blame the journalist who asked the question, who I think was from the BBC. Surprise, question. surprise. Um, but it is, a, I mean, it's a legitimate sort of gotcha question, though, isn't it? Oh, can you rule? I mean, because people were saying, oh, can you also rule out that we won't be It's so close to Christmas aliens. now. It's a, a month away. What's going to happen between now and Christmas that's going to justify a Christmas lockdown? But you can understand a politician saying, I can't do that, because imagine if he had to do it for whatever reason. And yeah, then they said, yeah, but hang on, you said you didn't have to, you couldn't do it. Defending him, aren't you? You're I'm not defending him. Defending him. I'm, not. Like little, I'm just saying that there can him. be moments when, as a politician, you don't want to be second-guessing yourself. No. 
Ooh. because he's always, I mean, although for, it wouldn't be the first time Boris did something that he said he wasn't going to do. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I mean every, every lockdown we've ever had, yeah. he said he, wasn't, yeah, he didn't exactly. want to do it. To every it. wife he's ever had. Well, indeed so. Yeah, I'll be home at midnight. Well, this is what I said about his, uh, <laughs> it's one minute to midnight up in glasses. So that's normally when he puts his trousers on and goes home. I don't want to think about <laughs> Boris's trousers. <laughs> Trousies. I mean, we, we have we have eight thousand. Not in Bow Road now, you know. <laughs> Trousies, isn't it? Trousies. We have we have eight thousand people in hospital for COVID, out of one hundred thousand beds at the moment. It's not. It's nothing. In right? infections, right? I actually don't give a monkey how many people are infected in this country. It's what it counts. It's the amount of number of people that are admitted to hospital yeah. and the amount of people that are dying. Yes. And those numbers are going down. It's funny how they stopped talking. Although about I did the see NHS, I did see they? a weekly figure this week that shows that they're up slightly, but that's the way it's going to go that you know it's going it's to it's, it's it's still relatively low the numbers are relatively low in terms of what it was like in january and february yes and you know at some point or other they're going to have to just admi admit that this is, will be here for a while that will people will be dying but the thing is they never tell us who's dying they never say no actually it's still lots of older people yes. over the age of 82 yeah. mm -hmm. with other problems mm -hmm. and other comorbidities and yeah. other vulnerabilities and all of that you know and in the end of the day you know, they just have to, they're going to have to at some point just but understand lots that. Lots of things they never tell us. They never tell us how many people are admitted to hospital that come out straight away, yeah. literally. How many people, most do, actually. Most do, literally, yeah. walk out the next day. Uh, how many people admitted to hospital completely free of COVID, then test positive, yeah. positive, positive yeah. even dawn, teeth in, one they're in, right. they're in there. They never tell us all this, do they? And, and and when the figures were falling the other week, no one, no, there were no stories about that. It was really quiet. Mm. And then they edge up a bit and they're like, oh, my God, yeah, lock us down yeah. now, Plan B. Because the, it seems like Boris Johnson is just itching to introduce more restrictions. I can't understand why. Not the first uh, time he's had an itch up, but... I'm sure no. you're right about that. We, I can see it already. Socially distanced Christmas. You yeah. know, Granny sat at the bottom of the garden. Mm. Have to get her Christmas dinner no, to her no. on, a, on a pulley. <laughs> Do you remember that ludicrous business in Scotland when they said that you should eat your Christmas dinner outside? I know. Yeah. In Scotland. In Scotland. <laughs> really? So, I mean, Are you just, sure? It's just going to kill everyone with pneumonia. There's not going to have time to get COVID. People, I just don't think people are going to put up with it. <sighs> They'll be recorded as COVID deaths as well, though. Well, um, yeah, I'm full of a ladder and it's a COVID death. Absolutely isn't it? right. But no, I mean, this is the thing. But they're looking, and he starts looking across to Europe and saying, but there's a massive wave coming from Europe. Well, why is there a massive well, wave? It doesn't come in that. a wave across like no, a weather front. It well, but Boris used that analogy, didn't he? Did. He said it was like a blizzard of COVID yeah. coming from the east. It's like, what? Doesn't mean no. anything. <laughs> I mean, is that like, you know, they had the beast from the east last year. Yeah. This year it's a COVID cloud yeah. that's going to come and wipe everybody out. <laughs> but there's another reason for nominating Boris this week, and I, it was one of my nominations as well, but I'm being generous. Uh, Jennifer L. Curie. Oh, yeah, I missed oh, that, yes. actually. What did she have to say? She's bonkers, though, isn't <laughs> you don't she? Want to be, if, you, if you've had your lunch, <laughs> you don't want to be What did she have this. to say for herself? Oh, she went into... It was a diary. She's diary. She's written a, a diary and publishing it. Obviously, she's shy Well, she's diary. only just written it. Uh, well, she does like the limelight, doesn't she? She, she really does. does. Have seen my diary, the yeah, Daily Mail. Yeah, exactly. It's published over the weekend where she's going into very graphic details um, about what she got up with Boris Johnson. Yeah, yeah. And there's one quote that sticks in my mind. This is from Boris. I can barely contain myself. You make me too excited. Oh. oh, goodness oh. me. Yeah, do your best, Boris, to contain yourself. I think it's oh. probably the best thing we can Why? say. Why? And then they, But that's awful, isn't it? I mean, what is wrong with people? Why does she want why does she think we want to know any of this stuff? I know. Well, I read it. I must, why did I read it? Oh my god. Well, you sort of have to. Yeah, it's my because job. Because you have to comment on these matters job. of state. It's my job. But it is kind of tawdry, isn't it? But it, it, it just adds to the whole sleaze thing, because this is when it, it, the, the affair when he was mayor of London. I don't really yeah. care about it. Though, no, do I you? don't really care about him having an affair because I expect do. all men to do that. Do you? What about yes. your husband? No, do you God, no. You don't expect him to no, do no, it. No, 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 no. Is that why he's injured at the moment? I don't know him out. Have you, yeah, you injured him with an iron bar again, haven't you? <laughs> That's the last time he goes out That's on his own. Thought. It's, by the way, it's wrong to beat husbands up, okay, just in case. Yeah. It's not just husbands. Why do you think I'm on a crutch? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't want to mention that. I don't want to get into that. Kicking I've no you under the why, table. Why it's happened, right. Um, so, is it time for um, your second nomination? Probably. Yeah, it I'm must shut be. Shut up, yeah. Yeah, because I've gone in the wrong direction. You see, normally I get ladies first, but in this case... But you know I'm Jason, not a lady, so... Well, no, I know you're not, not as much of a lady like, as, as I'd like you to be, but that's fine. It's OK. It's not a problem. Like, you know, most female panellists see described as pretty. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not true. No, it is. That is not it's true. Pretty. Well, he's not yeah. called me pretty yeah. either. Yeah, well, well, you're not a female, you are you? <laughs> did he? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. You look better than you did when you turned up first because of the makeup, but that's another story. Carry on. <laughs> I turned up looking this gorgeous. Yeah, you did, actually. I do like your jacket. I think <laughs> it's a very pretty colour. It's, it's out of my colour. Look, hold on. What's that? It's, 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 it's
It's matching. Oh, God. I know. Well, that's no good. You can't write with it's... a purple pen on a purple piece of paper. No, I've got white paper here. Okay, like. all right. It's OCD. Anyway, listen, get on with it. Right, okay. What's your second one? I don't think it's your show or something. Yeah, I know. Right, my second one. Um, where am I going? I'm going to Wales next. Wales? Why wouldn't I? The Actually, land I'm not that I forgot. I used to work a lot in Wales. It used to be a really fun place to go. Apparently now it's not. No, it's not. No. It's just like no. some like a hobbit land or something. <laughs> well, this is all thanks to Mark Drayford, who is the first minister of Wales. Yeah, what's up with him? Um, where do you want to start? How long we got? Um, anyways, despite introducing the most draconian COVID rules that we have in the United Kingdom at the moment, including masks literally everywhere you go, yes. social distancing, um, uh, everything. You name it, that he's trying to force the poor Welsh into doing it. Um, and then... <laughs> He's pictured dancing at a Diwali celebration, lovely. Oh, yes. Dancing in a crowd of people, no social distancing. Of course. Mm -mm, no. And not a single person wearing a mask, including him. How does that work? I That's like Sadiq Khan, isn't it? When Sadiq Khan hmm. was at Labour Party conference and he went to nightclub after nightclub, he did all sorts of singing, all sorts of speaking, hugging people. Um, even met up with Julie Hartley Burr at one point. Oh, my God. Um, and wasn't wearing a mask for that either. Was Julia disinfected after? Well, I think she was, Ooh. yeah. But he asked her why, he kept, why she kept having a go at him. She went, I have a go at everyone. And he went, OK, then. Seems like he didn't know. The entire Labour conference was at it when Angela yeah. Rayner couldn't wear a mask because otherwise we couldn't hear her calling Tories scum. No, yeah. she's got an excuse. She, was apology. she did apologise later. She did. Yeah, she course. did. Yeah, she a couple did of weeks sort of later. A couple so, of weeks a, later. It's like Boris apologising. It's only an apology if you actually mean it. Yeah. Well, he he's never meant that, though, has he? No. He's never ever meant an apology. He's do with apologising a bit more recently. Mm. So, and because it's called, I think it's called hypocrisy. There might be. It's more contagious yes. than COVID at It the seems moment. to be all the rage with politicians, though, doesn't it? And everybody. It? You know, I mean, we might get on to Prince Harry and Meghan later, but do you remember when they went to the 9-11 uh, Memorial oh, yeah. uh, with Mayor de Blasio mm. in New York and there was picture, footage of them walking through the building mm. without masks on and suddenly, as soon as they came anywhere near the press oh. conference, they suddenly stopped and put masks on. It's, it's all, you're going, we can see you, you know. It's we all can theatre, see you. isn't it? It's all theatre. I mean, everyone's sort of like, you know, when they're serious on screen, they're sitting like, you know, six foot apart with masks, etc. But behind the scenes, they're taking selfies draped over one another. And it's like, it's just my... Anyway, Mark Drayford's excuse for the fact that he was dancing badly, by the way, without a mask and amongst a crowd of people whilst insisting that everybody else in Wales wears masks and doesn't go out and social distances, was the fact that food was served at this event, so therefore he could... He didn't have to wear a mask. Oh, really? That's a great one. But did you ever hear that they've got a woman now, I think, who's the um, uh, the health secretary in Wales, or the health minister, whatever her name is, and they asked her what the definition of a nightclub was. Very funny clip, if you ever get to hear it. She couldn't explain it. And they were just... It was a very simple, straightforward interview. What's a nightclub? And she just hummed and hard. She said, well, of course, it'll be a place where people go... Um, to dance. Oh, OK, so if people were dancing in a pub, would that make it a nightclub? Well, not necessarily. It depends on the time. I mean, it was just ridiculous, and they could not even define <laughs> what a nightclub actually was because the rules were different for that. In the same, play, in the same way that some nightclubs apparently in Scotland have been putting chairs on the dance floor and telling people it's not a nightclub in order to get people in uh, who can behave differently from when they were... So is the, is the rule that if you're dancing, you don't have to wear a mask? Is that the ruling? They've now get, made that the rule, I think. If yes. I start dancing in the middle of a restaurant, does that make it a nightclub? Could do. So, well, if it's a Greek restaurant. Depends what sort of dance you're Maybe. doing as well, I yeah. think. Or, or whether you're dancing on your own or with other It's so ridiculous. That's <laughs> the point. <laughs> they won, at one point, Nicholas Sturgeon had the rule where they were saying that you couldn't drink standing up. That one of the things you'd have to do was to sit down to have a drink. Was this, was this was this before or after she was pictured standing up in a pub with a drink in her hand? Shortly after she said she never wanted to shake hands with anybody ever again, um, particularly and, men, and the men, which yeah. came as a great relief to men. <laughs> yeah, men the world over. I mean, unbelievable. Probably setting rules like this, like last year with Mark Drakeford again, when he's trying to ban the sales of non-essential items in the supermarket. Oh, so you have the saucepan aisle yes. in Tesco with big yellow tape yeah, right. over it yeah, to stop right. anyone touching it. And, they, and newspapers essential. were deemed to be non-essential, weren't they? And, and wasn't it, I mean, was it sanitary products as well? I think so. Not essential. Hmm, Mark, you want to try being a girl? Well, maybe no. not for him, mm. you no. know. But, yeah, well, you know, no. Mark and didn't Drakeford. He, didn't he once also try to uh, mooted the idea of banning booze sales in Wales? Have you tried not drinking when you're in Wales? Well, it's really hard. Well, I mean, that's bad news if you live in Cardiff, because that's all they seem to do. I mean, we used <laughs> to sit in the Marriott sell? Hotel. Cheap. Some fireworks, bargain cling film. Does Wales sell anything else apart from booze? Um, I kind of, I 
The your Welsh mind works in a mysterious good. way. <laughs> Welsh so lamb we, is quite. So nice. we've gone from lamb. Can you tell I've never been to Wham, cling film. Firework. I didn't know they made cling film. Is it? Sick of the knowledge what of yours. Just, when I picture a Welsh, you know, Welsh shop, a miserable cling little film? corner shop with cling film in it, okay. not much so else. No, I mean, do you want to tell us about what you get out of weekends in with your sheep and your cling yeah, film? Yeah, I think you should be on the same kind of sheep. You've got a watch list for that, shouldn't you? Cling film and. What are you doing with your rocket exactly? Wallpaper paste. Anyway, right, my third, my second nominee. Well, it's just random things. Things you could throw in that they sell. I don't know. I'm more worried about your weekend than it's. <laughs> if you think I've ever put up wallpaper, you don't know me as well as you should. No, it's in conjunction with cling film, a lamb, yeah. a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a kidnap plot by some very stupid people. Anyway, listen, um, have you ever heard of Claridge's? I know that you don't Are get you up to us? the West End much, no. do you? Um, but have you ever been in Claridge's? No, I don't think I Jason? have, actually. I don't think so. No, haven't you? Am I missing out? Well, I mean, it's a very expensive hotel, and yeah. it has a couple of quite neat, nice restaurants, and it has a Michelin-style chef Ooh, as well. Nice. Uh, by nice. the name of Daniel Hum... H-U-M-M, -M, Hum... It's a funny name, though, isn't it? <laughs> You're not being culturally inappropriate here, are you, in any way, shape or form? Oh, Just no. asking. Oh, no, no. Just in case. No, no, okay, nothing fine. to do with that. <sighs> right. No, I'll show you a picture of him if you like. <sighs> I don't know where he's from, but um, he's 45. And uh, he had a great idea because Claridge is very famous restaurants. People go there because they love the food, they love the ambiance. They like to say to people, I went to Claridge's last night, showing that they're very well off. Mm. He decided that it was a good idea yeah, actually to have an all vegan menu because obviously it's that kind of thing, isn't it, at the um. moment? You try and save the planet in whatever way you can. So nice. he put out a big statement of intent that basically, you know, from now on, we were only going to sell plant based products. Oops. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like the sound of plant-based products because you're either eating a plant <laughs> I'm sorry, or it's I'm a plant-based <laughs> something. Well, a plant, a banana's not a plant-based product, is it? <laughs> eh? Is no. it? I'm not going down that road. Yes. I, I mean, I don't really bananas, even know. Bananas is grow it? on trees. <laughs> yeah, but does it make it plant-based? It's <laughs> tree-based, isn't it? <laughs> Tree based, isn't like, it? I don't know where you're going trees, with this. Trees, one. It's not a banana trees, plant. Is it? Trees are plants. Are they? Trees are plants, I'm afraid. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm not going there. Listen, anyway, here's the thing. Poor old Daniel Hum didn't think about what the bosses at Claridge's might say, right? And uh, <clears throat> they said, actually, we don't really want you to do that. <laughs> and so he's now leaving. He's going because he's apparently decided that he can't possibly stay and cook non-plant-based food anymore. Um, you're right. <laughs> so, so he's quit over this, has he? Frying an egg is a resigning uh, issue. Claridge has said this is not the path we wish to follow, Fair proving enough. themselves to be very understated and, and very uh, sort of respectful. Surely you should give people a choice on the menu. You can have plant-based products, stop it, or, or a nice... Well, meat, if very, you fancy it. Well, there's a bloke called George Baldwin, who's another chef, right? And he apparently came out and said, be a visionary, not a sheep. Which is kind of an odd thing for a chef to, to say, isn't it? Because <laughs> well, especially if you're talking about plant sheep products. You're right. Mutton dressed as lamb. Oh, um, enough about me. Anyway, Clarence has said uh, that Daniel has been a long-standing friend of the hotel for many years and we wish him nothing but continued success as he spearheads this bold new vision. Now, that's I've had uh, firing letters that sound like that. They fired him, basically. He's yeah, leaving. Yeah, yeah, basically, um, unfortunately, yeah. you know, like, their you know, vision has... You've got a full backing. At some, point, at some yeah. point, their Old vision has, has changed, yeah. ch changed. They're no longer on the same path. Right. And he's out of a job. So he's a massive plank, this guy, Daniel Hum, <laughs> because he's basically kiboshed his own business. Why? I mean, that sounds like a fairly good job as well. Yeah. We wish to thank Daniel Hum and his extraordinary team at Davies and Brook for what they have created here at Claridge's since they opened in 2019, gaining accolades along the way under challenging circumstances. Um, we completely respect and understand the culinary direction of a fully plant-based menu <laughs> <laughs> that Daniel has decided to embrace and no one's reduced to London. However, it won't be here. <laughs> oh. uh, it's just brilliant. Oh, what a um, plum. And what a plank. I mean... I mean, I'm assuming he was pretty well paid as a Michelin star chef at Claridge's. I, I would have thought so. And he'll yeah, probably get another job, but I yeah, wouldn't really wish him to be unemployed. But what, why did he suddenly decide after working there for God Was he knows? so inspired by COP26? Well, just, it could be that. You know, I mean, he must be the only person. He's the only person that has been inspired yeah. by COP26. Yeah. It seems to me the only thing they managed to uh, agree to do was to have COP27. 
And 28. Uh, well, and, in, uh, and, in, in Sharm el Sheikh. Yeah. COP26 is our last chance to save the planet. Yeah, yeah. for COP27. Yeah. Uh, well, it in was Egypt. the last chance, but since it's like that old joke, isn't it, where the old uh, Henny Youngman is an incredibly old comedian that, that hardly anybody listening to this will have ever heard of, where he went, you know, doctor said I had three months to live, so I couldn't pay the bill. We gave another three months. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's like. <laughs> and, 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 you know. <laughs> So if we're a minute to midnight and we've already got COP27... Yeah, what are we now? And, and, yeah, 30 what? seconds to midnight? <laughs> and, and COP28 is also planned in the United Arab Emirates as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's a really carbon-neutral place, isn't it? The UAE. <laughs> I, I mean, there's Instagram influencers putting off more carbon than the entire <laughs> yeah, nation no, of the UK no, there. No, don't even go <laughs> you know, there. It's uh, no course. one goes anywhere out there without a private jet. Too, like also, that. you know, it's, it's riddled with, well. with air conditioning because it's about 50 degrees in the summer. I know. You know, no, it's no, absolutely ridiculous. No. Anyway, so... Um, uh, that's my second one. So we have to go back to Jason for his third. <laughs> have you forgotten about the plant? Is there anything plant-based I can help you with? <coughs> How about plant of the week? <laughs> hey, plant of the did week we it could the be. the aubergine joke the other week, didn't we? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. <clears throat> now, no conferring. Uh, your third nomination, please. My third nomination, Insulate Britain. Yes. Uh, in the news. Now, we haven't heard again. from them for a while. We haven't. It's nice oh, to hear from them you? again. What's I miss them. 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 Have they all stopped gluing themselves to things then? Well, what's happened specifically is that they're being dragged in front of the High Court Quite to account right, for too. the fact that oh, they've finally been gluing themselves dear. to things. Specifically, this one guy, uh, Oliver Rock, who. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they've got all the top names this week, haven't we? Oliver Rock. Hum Rock. Hum and Rock. It's Rock, ROC as well. ROC, Isn't that a, yeah, a company that makes. Um, I don't want to say it. Isn't it a company that makes um, you know, building materials, shall we say? <laughs> Rock. I'm, I'm sure not going to go there. I'm sure it is. I'm going to go I'm there. I'm going to look them up. It makes it sounds Republic of China to me, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, yeah, but that's just because you're one of those I'm think tank types. I completely lost whatever plot I had, which wasn't much of one, by the way. Yeah, Any so case, this, what are they up to this now? Bloke, they're all going to get banged Rock. up. It, Oliver Rock is very, very sad. He's, uh, he told some journalists, I'm crapping myself, I feel like crying, he says. I'm pretty sure that's he's probably a... what you would do if you, was, if you stapled yourself to the M25. <laughs> <Yeah. You know? laughs> on what planet does gluing your, your head to some tarmac make sense? So, but hold on a minute, they, they knew there was an injunction against them. They knew yes, what they were doing was yeah. breaking the law. Yeah, they so said, why are they suddenly... And they also said, did they not, you can't injunct the planet Earth. You, know, you can't um, you know, make laws against nature. Specifically the M25. But well, actually, it turns out you can, you can, and they're yes. going down. Yes, yeah. they are. Excellent. Yes. But why are they shocked by it? I mean, it's like, you know... You know in comparison, they make in uh, Extinction Rebe Rebellion look a little bit professional, because at least they had all those trainings where they said, here's what to do if you get arrested. These guys apparently have no idea. They have no idea about anything. Have you ever interviewed any of them? Oh, my God. Dear me, I've seen them being... I oh, mean, my yeah. Lord. They always walk out on me. I mean, it's not just them. A lot of people walk <laughs> yeah, out I mean, on me, to, to be, be fair, honest with you. Sit there. Sit there. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, they have got no idea what they're even campaigning about. I mean, let alone no, the fact they don't even insulate their own homes, which has almost become a cliche yeah. now. Yeah, they but... also have, haven't managed to insulate themselves from the law, have they? Yeah. So, they, 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 they so, so this guy doesn't want to go to prison now. He doesn't. He's absolutely terrified. And there's, uh, it's not just him. I think it's 19 people. Uh, nine people, sorry, have been summoned to face contempt. Uh, two years in jail they could get. They could get unlimited fines. Marvelous. They could have their assets seized. I mean, all of this well, was entirely they have to un unglue their assets from the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have been fun. They, yeah. They, yeah, rather than their heads, they should have glued something else. That would have been hilarious. Yeah, I think Rock are in fact a uh, building company. I can I can assure you of that. What, anyway, what sort of products do they produce? They build like? all sorts of things with all manner of uh, different building materials. I think you find. Anyway, um, like <laughs> any plant cement, based, maybe anything specific plant based. <laughs> Things that grow. Plant-based building. Just leave it at that. Okay. That'll be fine. Um, right, so you're number three. We must, we must be uh, really? uh, getting oh down God, to the sorry. wire. Actually, now, I'll tell you what, before we do that, we could talk about who we carry over because Meghan Markle's been in the news. I don't know if you want to nominate her or whether she's one of yours or whether she's a carryover. I, I, I feel like I nominate Meghan and Harry. So should we carry them I'll over? Carry then? them over. Because I have, to, I have to say that since the last bank of the week, she has admitted in court that she forgot that she okay, told right, those okay, people right. about the book that okay, she all wanted it. them to write. Oh, so you We've forget where you put your keys, right? You forget <laughs> leaving the iron on. Yeah. Forgetting to write an entire book? Oh, sorry, it helped. Sorry, write no, an she didn't write the book. book. No, but she wrote a lot of emails. Yeah. Didn't she? And it was um, a two-hour yeah. brief. Oh no. Well, I mean, and and it would seem as though That's as right. well the guys that wrote the book seem to have forgotten they, what she told them as well and because they said it wasn't true. It's well, I mean, what chance? It's no. mass amnesia, isn't it? Really it really is mass amnesia. We, we can all well. sympathise. It's a real every man problem. Though, mm. isn't oh, it? Yeah. She's one of us. Yes. You know, we've all been there. Well, there was a great Matt cartoon, wasn't there, where the guy walks into the room and goes, you know. 
Have you ever walked into a room and forgotten that you've told somebody to write a book about yourself? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great you cartoon. Because it is ridiculous, isn't it? And they expect yeah. us to swallow this stuff, this, right? But it's they do, they think we're stupid. But this is on top of the, I think it was about 17 lies, half-truths, her-truths, however you want to dress it up, that she managed to come out with in the yes. four Does hours. Does she also have her lies as well as her <laughs> yeah, truths? Yeah, her truth. Does she? Uh, the Oprah Winfrey interview. I mean, pretty much most of the things she said in that was either... A, a, a distortion of the truth, or just a barefaced lie, yes. to be honest mm. with you. Mm. I mean, even the thing about Archie's skin colour, according to her, it was several conversations while she was pregnant with yes. senior Ross. According to Harry, it was one conversation when they began going out with each other, when Harry and Meghan started going out. So it's like, you know, they can't even agree to get their lies right. Yeah. No, I mean, that is ludicrous, isn't it? So mm. also, to add mystery even further on top of that, uh, you've got Harry now signing up to be part of this new fake news foundation, <laughs> which is not exactly what you think it is. It's not him putting out more fake news. It's it's apparently it's about him stopping fake news from being written about him and Meghan. Well, him single-handedly. Uh, and it's a foundation... Is he which gagging is, his wife, do? But the first problem with it is... I don't know, I think I'm going to go there. Um, but the first problem with it is Aspen. It's called the Aspen Foundation, right? But do you know where it's based? Washington, D.C. Now, I don't know how well you know America, but last time I was in America, Aspen's in Colorado... Um, so why would you call it the Aspen Foundation if you're going to base it in Washington, D.C.? Wouldn't you call it the Washington, D.C. Foundation? Yeah. And base it in Aspen? Or, well, I don't know. Why, what? why have they done that then? I don't know. Oh, Maybe okay. it's some more fake news, isn't it? How does Clearly. it work? What's he going to, is he going to just report in yeah. tweets? He is he... one of 15 directors who are apparently right. going to highlight the ways that the news can be more honest. So it's going to walk around. Presumably, one of them is going to be don't ever talk to these two. Yeah, so, so, he's, so he's going to walk around after Megan everywhere, making notes about everything she says. Yeah, I think he's, top, he's popping into the Hastings Observer next week to see if they're doing <laughs> all the right things when they're doing stories about the fishermen down there in uh, oh, he should on stick, the shale. Oh, he should stick, it's just a joke, isn't it? He should stick with playing his balls in the garden, shouldn't they? So I we're mean, carrying them over anyway. So who's good. your third? Right. Okay. Well, there was a seamless link back about three hours ago. <laughs> It's basically all 30,000 of the political elite that use oh, private yes. jets and motorcades to jet into COP26. Yes. Um, which what finished, a waste of time that was. It finished on Sunday. Did it? Yeah. But they were still going on Monday, though. Oh, uh, well, it, it was officially finished. Well, they had a vital it, deal to sign. Yeah, yeah it, was it was really important. It was officially finished on Sunday, but it wasn't, obviously, because three weeks was not quite enough time yeah. to bore us all rigid with a load of virtual signalling mm. guff, which is what they've done. I um, love the fact also that they had to bring him back on the Wednesday yeah. to remind everybody what they were there yeah. for. Yeah, I'm like you've forgotten, what? obviously. Well, well, actually, it was very easy, yeah. I mean, given the amount of private jets and motorcades. And, and diesel and, generators as well everywhere. Well, they... The diesel they using, generators everywhere. But they were, use, they were using electric cars, right? But the Glasgow didn't have enough no. charging points. No. So they had to import a load of diesel generators, yeah. probably flown in at great expense yeah. as well. And um, that's no surprise then that you used double the amount of uh, emissions that COP25 did. You know that? Did they? Yeah. Double the emissions. That doesn't yeah. surprise me. Well, that's quite an achievement. So it is. I mean, they should put that down as one of their achievements. What a waste of time. I mean, time. I heard as well that they said that uh, as they were all leaving after the final kind of statement was issued and they said, you know, People were saying to themselves, uh, especially those in, in, in sort of developing countries, that the train is definitely on the way now, which is more you can say for when it started, because remember the train couldn't get there because a tree had fallen down and uh, was, everyone was, who was at Houston yeah, it was couldn't get... a climate get, event. It was a climate like event. winter. Well, as I or called autumn. it, autumn. Autumn. Yeah. I called it autumn. Yeah. You know, it rains it a lot. Autumn. It's a bit windy. Trees, trees, trees fall, over fall in the down. Wind, and they always, and if, yeah, you can't get trains in the autumn. Everybody knows but that. The, 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 my favourite fact to come out of... There's only one favourite fact to come out of COP. 26th, um, was that on the last Thursday, just it was all winding up and they were agreeing to not actually do anything whatsoever, China revealed that its coal miners achieved an all-time record by digging up <laughs> 12, tw it. over 12 million tonnes yeah. in one day. Well done, China. <laughs> Keep it up with me on China. That was a What about Alok Sharma, anyway? right? Alok Sharma, who does this thing where he went... And everybody started clapping. He got a standing ovation for almost... Back? That makes me feel like crying. Yeah. <laughs> what, his face? I mean, he didn't yeah. even cry. He just kind of went like that, like looked, held, held back tears, apparently. <laughs> Why? He claimed he hadn't had much sleep. <laughs> well, I haven't had much sleep, to Neither be honest with you, but I'm not going to cry. I mean, to be honest, if I'd been there for two weeks, I'd have been probably hanging myself uh, well, rather which, than just crying. Which, which, there was one delegation. Was it the Nigerian <laughs> delegation that just actually admitted... They went to the local uh, Costco, didn't they? Yeah, Loaded they up with loads. Yeah, they were just using it as a giant <laughs> jolly. And Good I'm with them. them. They were yeah. having a good they time. They had the right <laughs> idea. Absolutely <laughs> right. Right, so um, we're going to have to hurry this because I'm going to have to put Matt Hancock back in because Matt Hancock still has convinced everybody 
that he is somebody to not forget, yes. right? <laughs> he's awesome. tried, he's tried, you know, coming back through an African country being nominated by the United Nations. That turned out to be another <coughs> old cobblers. And they said, no, actually, no, you're not going to get that job. He then came out with some story about a book that he was going to write. Oh, God, yeah. Um, there's and a mystery he, around this, isn't there's there? There's a mystery because apparently the book publishers are denying that mm, he's writing a yeah. book. But he's claiming that he's writing a book all about saving the NHS. And then the other thing, you know, he was nominated for this last week, was how he says everywhere he goes, people come up to him all the time and say, thank you for saving the NHS. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where he's going. Shaking warmly by the but throat. I don't <laughs> reckon that anyone has ever gone up to Matt Hancock to thank him for anything. No. Is it the seven and a half people who use the Matt Hancock app? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, seven and seven of whom which, were mates of his that ran pubs in yeah. his yeah, local which town. Which cost us millions of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that was my other favourite thing. Is the amount, you know, you know, we all brought rubbish stuff during lockdown, like you know, running you? machines and hot tubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hot tubs. Evidently, you live in a flat. Tub. Hot tubs. You bought a hot tub? Not me personally, okay. right. but we all brought gadgets and things during lockdown. A total waste of money. I mean, hot tubs was the one that stuck in my mind for yeah. some reason. <laughs> but it's like that Hancock brought a complete waste of time test and trace and PPE. He did. He did. <laughs> and, 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 of course, With he left money. Out, didn't he? And he left yeah. his wife and kids as well for Gina Lola Brigida, whatever oh her name is. Oh, my God. You, you can know. never unsee that video, can no, you? No, I'm afraid not. And every no. time you mention his name now, everybody always plays it, which is great. Yeah. And, yeah, we'll never forget him for that. Oh, that But we're not thanking good. him for anything. No. He wrote to the press regulator trying to get the press not to... Not to show that image anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think why. It I makes know. him an absolute amazing. sex god. Absolutely amazing. Uh, let's get to the meat and drink of the matter. Uh, you should pick Jason's, I think, uh, for the first time that he's here. Uh, what are your three, Jason, My so three that Dawn were. could nominate? The French for failing to stop the migrant boats, mm. Boris Johnson for Ooh. failing to rule out a Christmas lockdown, and Insulate Britain for failing to understand how the law works. Mm. God, that's a lot of failing tough, in there. It is good, it? isn't it? Oh, no. It's not a bad debut, I'd have to say. Oh. Mm. No, it's very good. I mean, I, you know, considering all three I stole of your my ideas. list as well. <laughs> um, I'm going to agree, it's a very good list. Oh, I honestly. I'm so torn on this one. I'm actually going to go with the French, to be honest. I think that's a good yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, good a very choice. good yeah, choice. Yeah, not all of them, I'm sure some of them are lovely, but, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, it's the French government, it's, really, it's, isn't it's it? Macron. It's Macron. It's Macron. Exactly right. Now, your three, tell me, and I'll pick one from yours. <clears throat> right, my three were our, um, uh, Tesco and yeah. Santa's vaccine passport. Yes. Don't do that. Uh, Mark Drakeford, mm. hypocrisy. Yes. And um, COP26, um, a complete and utter waste of yes. time. Yes, I think COP26 is very, very um, tempting. But I'm going to go with Tesco's, I think. Yeah. Because I think Tesco's have really blown themselves out of the water with this. They're Stupid. Gonna, they're they're going to lose business over Christmas it. Christmas is about having fun. It's not about reminding us that yeah. there's a pandemic, you're going to die. Yes. So, right, Jason, you get to choose mine. Okay. Um, it's either Chef Hum from Claridge's. <laughs> Uh, or it's East Yorkshire buses, or it's Matt Hancock. I think it has to be Matt Hancock. He's just so self-important, self-congratulatory, isn't Matt it? Matt Hancock, love it. Well, yeah. he's going to be, because we're soon to be compiling, and I'm not sure whether we'll get you involved in this because you're a bit of a latecomer to the uh, to the proceedings, but enough. Dawn will be invited, Lucky of escape, course, believe as me. ever, to the Plank of the Year, hey. which we did last year. Uh, and at the moment, I'm afraid Harry and Meghan is still a long way ahead. I, yeah. But I tell you what, Matt Hancock's getting up there, mm -hmm. um, uh, as is Boris, funnily yeah, enough. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is with Matt Hancock, he's just got the most unfortunate name, hasn't he? He really has, <gasps> and you just can't stop making fun of it. Um, so, <laughs> Tesco's, Matt Hancock and the French. What are we thinking? So we're going to have to go one, two, Strong and three. Candidates. Ooh, la, la. Strong candidates mm. there. I mean, I think, personally, I'm always going to say the French should go to the top of the list. You really don't like the French, do you? It's, Have it's, you had some kind of childhood trauma in France? <laughs> you know. No? Did you have a no, running with a baguette? I remember. <laughs> <laughs> or a horse. It's, it's just patriotism, isn't it? You can't... can't we well, don't have to hate the French to be patriotic. Being patriotic is not about hating other countries. Have you ever been taken up the Eiffel Tower? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> not well <laughs> conscious. I apologise for that. <laughs> not well conscious. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to nominate Tesco's to win it. And I know you'll like that because you think if you nominate the one that won, you somehow won it, right? You have this kind of bizarre... Competitive development because it's a competition streets, yeah. and I win. Yeah. It's hashtag Team Dawn. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. So I think get the Tesco's and go for it, Mike. I think Tesco's should be it. number one because they won't get it again, will they? I mean, this is their. Well, I don't know. This it is their, what they're going to do. This is their the time in the sun. But... I'm going to go Tesco's number one. Um, I'll put the French in as number two. Very good. I'm happy with that. I can hear a phone ringing. Does that, that nice. mean the time's up? So that means uh, we will make Matt Hancock number three. Yep. Okay. So it looks as though plank of the week this week. Tesco's because of Santa. Merry Christmas. Yeah.